I'm Matt Bichard here in Dallas for NARIT's REIT World 2017. Joining me today is Dave Bragg, the Managing Director for Strategic Research with Green Street Advisors. Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. After more than a decade covering apartments in the residential sector, you recently shifted your focus to lead Green Street's strategic research effort. What exactly does that department and that effort entail? Strategic research for Green Street focuses on broad topics that have implications across property sectors and across markets, and our effort is designed to help investors, whether they're in the public or the private market, uh, improve uh, their thought process around their investment strategy. Oftentimes we take a long-term perspective, and we often end up trying to defy conventional wisdom as well. So what topics has Green Street's strategic research focused on? One of the topics that that has been uh, asked about and discussed very often recently is the decision by Amazon to open a separate and equal corporate headquarters likely away from Seattle and that has resulted in a lot of questions coming our way about the prospects for handicapping the identity of that city for headquarters number two and we could actually make pretty good uh, cases for more than a dozen cities in the U.S., uh, but ultimately we think it's unknowable. We think it's very difficult to handicap Amazon's priorities. So instead we focused on another conclusion from that piece of news, and that's that this decision by Amazon carries negative implications for Seattle relative to the outlook that we had for Seattle in the past. So what we did is we went in and we make adjustments to our near-term and long-term growth forecast for Seattle in our private market product, which is real estate analytics, and our public market product, which is REIT research. So I read your recent report, Demography is Not Destiny, and, and many people consider demographics as a major contributing factor for success or failure in their real estate investments. How does Green Street, Green Street think about demographics? Sure. Uh, Green Street has a bit of a different perspective, and you're right. A lot of investors consider demographic-driven de demand as a major input uh, in their underwriting. And uh, we think about it a little bit differently. When demographics are easy to see coming, uh, oftentimes supply can react accordingly. And an example of that uh, that continues to uh, provide new evidence to this line of thinking is the senior housing sector. There's a terrific demographic-driven demand wave uh, that will continue for the next several decades. However, developers can see that coming too, and they're building into that and adding new supply. So our thought is that demographic-driven demand can only be very helpful to an outlook for a property sector or a market when there are limitations on the ability to add new supply. Otherwise, it's very important to focus on negative demographic-driven demand, which can really hinder the prospects for growth in the future. And lastly, can you tell us more about Green Street's research on the influence of land use regulation on new supply? And what are the key regulatory issues that investors should be focused on and why? Many property investors consider the terms high barrier or supply constraint to be key components of their investment strategy. In fact, almost half of the REITs that Green, Street's co Green Street covers uh, consider one of those two terms as a description of their investment strategy. And that got us thinking about the drivers of supply constraints. And oftentimes there's an emphasis on land availability and high costs, but there's a third that's more important than anything else, and that's land use regulation. And land use regulation varies dramatically at the property and the submarket level, and it's influenced by a variety of different factors. And the most important of which is NIMBYism. And NIMBYism, or not in my backyard, uh, is especially powerful in California where there's a lot of state and local uh, reasons why residents have more NIMBY uh, influence than in other places. Uh, but there's also uh, a series of other factors that influence a market's land use regulation. Another is uh, fiscal incentives, which is the market's dependence on property tax, which happen to be a lot higher in some East Coast markets than in the West Coast markets, specifically California's are lower due to Prop 13. Uh, we put all of those factors under consideration and decided to look into the markets that are typically considered to be high barrier and one of the key conclusions of that analysis that I think defies conventional wisdom is our realization and conclusion that the New York market is not nearly as supply constrained as most people believe. 
It's still supply constrained relative to many of the Sun Belt or high growth markets, but far less so than the other gateway markets, and especially West Los Angeles. That remains by far the hardest market to put up new property. And uh, for that reason, we think that uh, growth prospects over the long term are outsized there, especially relative to New York. And one last thought on that is the public market seems to be a bit out in front of this relative to the private market. We think that uh, West LA private market values are more appropriately priced than New York City private market values, which look a little bit expensive. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. For more from REIT World 2017, be sure to visit NAIREIT's website, REIT.com.